It's October, the spooky Halloween month, and yet I haven't played a spooky game in a long time. Apart from, of course, Spooky's Jump Scare Mansion, but the, that just don't want to do that game. So I've been thinking, how the hell do I come back to a series that I stopped for my own mental health? Because it had some visual horror elements, and I'm not talk talking about Doki Doki. Why would I ever be talking about that game? One day. No, I want to talk about Danganronpa 2. Goodbye, despair. Yeah, this was meant to be a really interesting uh, video I was wanting to do, but you know, it just doesn't feel very festive. It really, really doesn't. It doesn't even feel like Danganronpa either, does it? I know. Yes! Danganronpa 2. I now feel it. I feel I want to tackle it. I feel like I'm able to tackle it. People, I hope you're ready for this. We're gonna dive and finally put to rest the Danganronpa, the little Monokuma dancing, everything about Danganronpa for me. Oh boy. Buckle up. So yes, hello, and it is back to me being, doing this, and well, yeah, blah, blah, blah. I could give you all the details on that, but today I really want to talk about one of the games I wanted to do for a good while, but had to stop for very good reasons. Now, yes, I want to talk about Danganronpa 2, a really, really good sequel, and to the point where I actually prefer Danganronpa 2's storyline elements over Danganronpa 1's elements. Also, just to be more clear how I like this game over the previous one, and just finally put to rest the Despair Challenge. This no, none of that, we're not doing that intro, it's not the Despair Challenge, we're not going to be, you know, saying any puns of despair. Despair! No, none of that, shame on you, Ali, you know bear. We need to actually just put an end to this, we need to lower the Despair Challenge down, because this is technically what it would have been wrapping up to. Uh, if I actually beat the other two games, but nevertheless, we're gonna crack on in and find out why this was such a great follow-up to the first Danganronpa and how it expanded the world of the hope and despair. I hope you're ready, because I'm really rocking for this. So much so, I'm on the side of hope and despair. Despair! Get it? Because he's a bear. In 2012, the visual novel game Danganronpa 2 was released. It was a highly anticipated sequel produced by Spike Chunsoft. It's the second game in the Danganronpa franchise. It actually follows quite closely to the original one. It was first released in Japan on the PlayStation Portable in July 2012 and for the PlayStation Vita later on in 2013. Meanwhile, America and the Worldwide was in 2014. The PC port was released in 2016 as a bundle for the PlayStation 4 called Danganronpa 1 2 Reloaded. Also contained the first Danganronpa game, which was released in March 2017. An enhanced version was eventually released on the iOS and Android in 2020, and a new port is coming out on the Nintendo Switch in 2021. This is definitely by far a very good sequel to the first Danganronpa game, considering it set up so many great outcomes and what potentially could be. The fact that you don't play with the original cast, it's a brand new cast, and development of this game started when Kazutaka Kotaka was writing the light novel prequel Danganronpa Zero and it hinted about the sequel with the following approval. He aimed to develop a unique plot which gives players a mysterious elements in a group of islands, inspired by the television series Lost. You take role of the protagonist, Hajime Hinata. He is a part of the group of high school students who are trapped on a tropical island by their school's headmaster, Monokuma, the bear that's half despair. Poo, poo, poo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't say anything. He's a sentient stuffed bear, but he's also joined alongside with Monomi, a sentient stuffed rabbit. Similar to the first game, you are to leave the island, but the students must kill one of their peers not to be caught in the substance investigation and trial. The game was received well with all the critics. Critical response to the game's narrative and cast was generally favourable. However, the gameplay and elements involving class trials 
earn mixed responses, with some of the parts becoming uninteresting. While earlier critics proved it unchallenging, Danganronpa 2 was later on followed off by a spin-off, another episode, Ultra Despair Girls, and we will talk about that some point in the future. However, there was the anime Danganronpa 3 End of Hope's High Peak High School, which aired on July 11, 2016. It's a loose sequel to the series, as it not only does the prequel how it all came to be, but also shows a little bit what happens afterwards with the group and how they go about it. The gameplay itself saw a great step up from the previous game, due to the fact that yes, what wasn't broke don't fix, you really just go around doing a visual novel and have a class trial with some mini games in it. It's not really rocket science and from the first game if you really want me to talk much about how the writing's amazing and breaking it up and the investigation, once again it's exactly the same as the first game, however a few things are very different with the mini games, and this is what I'm going to more aim at. But if you really want to hear me talk about the first game and how like the gameplay really works, go check it out on this one. You know, just click this link right here. My Lord and Master tells you to click it. This is my religion now. Okay, so like I said, yes, some things have changed. Instead of being a 3D environment, it's now a 2D side-scrolling to area to area. However, it is broken up into five different islands, much like the school being locked off into different floors. It's the same in scenario. Once again, Monokuma popping up and being the whole evil, yes, I want you to actually kill one another and do class trial and that, that never changed from the first game. It follows on a lot of beats and paths, especially if you've gone from one game to the next, like I did. It felt very like, I've done this before, let's move on. However, what I wasn't expecting was the characters, they're well more fleshed out, especially for the gameplay. Due to the fact I found a lot more of the actual murders and trials way more tricky than what I'd ever imagined. Due to the fact that, yes, it's very point and click and find out and talk to people and get as much clues as you want, but as soon as you go into the trial, this is where the meat of the gameplay really is. Due to the fact it's actually going around the room with voice actors saying their lines and that, and you've got to pick the various dialogues to shoot through and like at least pick which one's going to be the right one to progress the trial. It's fair enough in that sense. The trial mini games got a real upgrade. Now some of them are really good, some of them are really bad. The improved Handman's Gambit is not really improved, it is horrible, I hate it to hell and I really wish they didn't mess with it as the way they did. But to actually explain it, the player travels into Hajime's mind uh, in a mini game to similar to Danganronpa's Trigger Happy Havoc equivalent. However, the letters are now on a set path and must be shot in order. If two different letters collide, it causes damage to Hajime's influence gauge. However, if Hajime also shoots the wrong letter, it also will damage him. But it's very tricky and hard to get right. Especially in the later stages where this starts getting really difficult by throwing quite a lot. And being dyslexic as well, trying to remember how to spell a word whilst trying to shoot letters that are cross pathing and make sure they don't combine into each other. Oh my god, you can see already how bad that is for me. Panic talk action. Now this is a really unique one because this is brand new. This is the equivalent bullet time battle minigame. Although the rhythm mechanic is still the same, instead of the influence gauge, Hajime now damages the shields which flow around the opponent. Once the shields are destroyed, four words or word segment will appear on screen which, if selected in the correct order, form a rebuttal argument. However, get it wrong, you're back to doing the mini game again. One, I like this, it's good, it was improved on the previous bullet time mini game. it was brilliant, I loved it. Rebuttal showdown, hate this to hell. Really wish they didn't do it, but I like how they've implemented it. It's a 50-50. Similar to the non-stop debate, instead it's a one-on-one -on -one debate against an opponent. Segments must now be destroyed using a blade, and the correct weak point identified to destroy the final truth blade. There are multiple segment stages which player has to destroy all the opponent's segments to move on to the next stage. If the player is not able to destroy the segments, they must retreat and return to the previous stage. It's annoying. It catches you off guard when it happens, and it does make you feel like it's very like they're thinking on their feet and trying to argue against me, but I found this way more easier on my phone than I did on the PC, and god forbid when I play on the Switch, I hope I find it easier. The last one of the mini games is Logic Dive. Now I love this, but once again, trying to focus on too many things and also figure on another thing is going to be very difficult. So the player travels in Hajime's mind and rides a snowboard through the virtual obstacle course. Sounds cool, doesn't it? 
At certain points along the course, the multiple choice questions are posed, which answered by traveling along the correct route. Choosing the incorrect answer causes Hajime to fall off the course, wasting time. Hajime must reach the end of the course before the time limit ends. Now, like I said, this is cool because it starts you off easy, but by the time you get to the last class trial, oh my god! There are very, very few times you can mess up on this. And if you keep messing up on it, you can just keep kissing your ass goodbye. That's the mini games. But other than that, like nothing else has really changed for gameplay wise. You do go from place to place, check out things. However, a few additional things have been added in, such as find the hidden monokumas. That's fun. There's five in each island, if memory serves me correct. Maybe. Once you find them, hey ho, they're collectibles. There's still the mono machine, which is still quite nice because this adds on to the extra life to spare, like mini game, which you get when completing the game. You also have some other stuff to do, which is just generally chat to people, find the coins, and just generally look for funny parts in between, because they do sprinkle some good moments in between the plot. So it's hidden cutscenes or hidden things you've got to do. It's fun, it does the job, and what wasn't broke don't fix, because the plot itself is actually really good. Right, I'm going to spoil the plot. If you haven't played the second game or you don't really know, I'm going to talk at length here about the plot. I'm mostly quoting off the Wikipedia because trying to remember it all off by hand and trying to explain it the way I was explaining it didn't work. So this is just your general warning. Skip to this time period and you'll nah, and skip all the plot. But once again, you're going to miss the chunk of really what Danganronpa 2 is. Take a shot if it sounds exactly like the previous game. The players control Hajime Hanata, an amnesiac boy who just became one of Hope's Peak Academy's ultimate students. Take a drink, that's the first one. Alongside 15 other students who he has to befriend in the camp. Apart from Nagito, but we'll get to him. This game is set on a remote tropical island called Jabawak Island, where they have been marooned by an alleged teacher, a small rabbit-like creature mascot called Usami. Who claims it to be a field trip? However, the school's principal, Monokuma, announces the student cannot leave the island unless they murder one another and get away with it. Take a second drink. There you go. If the students can identify a murder in the class trial, the culprit is executed. And they make the wrong assumption, the killer goes free whilst everyone is sentenced to death. And if you're taking your third drink, you're catching on. Several students are murdered over the course of the game, and through Hajime's skills of investigation, the killers are discovered and executed. As this happens, new areas of the islands are discovered, and the group becomes more aware of the organization monitoring them. The Future Foundation Nagito, through a fucked up process, arranges his own death so that Chikai is considered a killer, and is executed. During the graduation, it is learned that she is actually an AI program created by the late Chihiro from the previous game, to observe and protect the students during the Future Foundation's experiment. After Chikai's death, Hajime recovers his memory of arriving at the islands with Nagito, who had a transplanted arm of a woman, Junko Anoshima. And if you don't know who she is, really, go check out the first game. There you are, link, thumb. As reality falls apart around him, Hajime learns that Nagito and his fellow students are surviving members of the ultimate despair group, Junko Led whose terrorist actions led to a crisis known as the Tragedy, which caused a worldwide social collapse. The Future Foundation has been attempting to undo the ultimate despair's damage. Makoto and Ayagi, who captured the surviving members, but rather than executing them, decided to rehabilitate them by erasing their memories and putting them into a virtual reality program. Makoto warns Hajime that the artificial intelligence copy of Junko has hijacked the program and is trying to manipulate the events to process the bodies of the deceased students which are now which are still intact in the real world. Once the surviving students graduate, Alter Ego Junko's ultimate plan is to download herself into every person onto the planet. Makoto tells Hajime if the class votes not to graduate, it will allow him to reset the system and purge Alter Ego's Junko. Junko's attempts to deter Hajime is revealing that he is Izuru Kamakura, a former leader of Ultimate Despair. The other students hesitate, afraid of reverting to their original personalities, but Hajime eventually finds the inner courage to thwart Alter Junko's plan and persuades the others to refuse the graduation, proposing that they create a future which they do not have to forget. Hajime, Makoto and the others reset the system, delete Alter Junko and retain their memories. In the epilogue, Makoto is confident the students will find a way to revive their friends. 
that's really the basic plot effectively and it's it's good i like it it's one of the ones that the plot itself starts getting a wee bit daft towards the end obviously with alter realities body swamping junko fucking enoshima still alive in some way but it all makes you feel that it's a step towards a future that this is the pinnacle end to it all and then they made the anime season two where they have the full stop to the anime end by doing what comes after however Overall, I can't really say the response was bad due to the fact I've got 8 out of 10s and 4 out of 5 stars. And I would actually say Dangar number 2 is a really good sequel and it's one I fairly enjoy and have enjoyed playing again. So what else can you do in Dangar number 2? Well, right off the bat, they have school mode or what they like to call island mode. Now, just like the previous game where you got to actually just multitask everyone to sort of clean, search, construct. Uh, it's a multi... It's basically governing your characters to go and do the things it's very easy it runs for about x amount of days and you can easily do it through a couple of times however during your free mode you get to go and hang with certain characters try and romance them or try and talk to them be buddies and effectively get their best friend stats mirror completing 100 percent is fairly easy it takes about three or four attempts i loved it it was a great way of me de-stressing after beating the game especially when i'm trying 100 percent the game and by the way people would not recommend it for this game you do not need to 100% this game. If you want to play it for the fun, do not 100% it because Magical Girl Miracle Monomy is the screw you mode of everything. And this was on top of another mode in a second, which I'll explain. Magical Girl Monomy is basically you have five areas to really choose from, which are the five areas of the islands. And the idea is you have to use Monomy to draw a circle, which will summon things to kill the weak critters. And you have a boss battle at the end of it. There's waves and it's you get awarded random items and items can increase your stats. It's really annoying. Effectively, it's, it's just in general a nightmare to deal with. I really hate this mode due to the fact that it's so RNG. And especially if you're going for 100%, you really need a walkthrough guide for it. Because, oh my god. Like, there is a secret stage in it where you get to go fight Monokuma and all that, but you go go fight all the Mono Beasts as well at the same stage. And even that's got some random drops. Like, just going on the wiki page right now to look at all the stuff, there's a lot of ribbons, there's a lot of underwear, there's a lot of wands, there's... And it tells you their drops, where you can get them best and that, but my god, this took hours. 100% in this is not needed. Just play it once or twice and go, meh. That's all it is. If you're doing this for the 100%, you are insane like I was. Like I said, on top of Magical Miracle, you have the Digital Pest. Now, these are done in the actual main story campaign. Y'all can also do it during the Island Life mode. Due to the fact you need to do it on the World Hub where you run left to right, effectively. However, doing the quick run doesn't do it. Uh, by hitting the tab and you just spin to the next one, it doesn't work. You need to actually run. And it works like a Tamagotchi. Overall, it has four different forms, and each one takes amount of steps. 100, 1,000, 100, and then whatever last evolution, where then it will decide it's had enough. Overall, you get so many different things. You got snake, the poop, pig, gorilla, monomy, monokuma. There's ways of getting them, and you have to raise it, love it, care, keep checking on it, keep cleaning its poop. It is a Tamagotchi within a game, which I really, really wish they didn't add in, but they did. Well, with all said and done, yeah, this was quite an interesting sequel. I really like this sequel so much so that I don't care about the jarring ending. I don't really care about how ludicrously over the top it really got. I mean, we're talking about the same series that had a killing game in a school that had bolted windows and no one knew where it was. Even though, you know, Post Peak Academy was the biggest thing and giveaway and no one was going near it. You know, I, I've got my gripes and grapes about it all, but it's it's good for what it does. And for now, I've got to say goodbye to the monochromed two-tone bear who brings despair. I've got to say goodbye to him just now because right now I can't get around to playing Killing Harmony until I get my hands on the Switch. Or, I can't really bring myself to complete the Ultra Despair Girls because it is very jarring from the series. So much so, it's not the events are seen canon, but the gameplay isn't. It's weird. It's you either love or hate. It's like Marmite, really. And for me, 
I'm gonna have to say this. Dangaramba, goodbye, despair. It's definitely a goodbye from me. As for the rest of the series, one day we will return and find out what V3 Killing Harmony is all about. I have gone completely blind towards it, so I'm gonna wait and see what comes of it. As for Ultra Despair Girls, I think I've touched enough on that to explain how I feel about it. But there's one other thing I'm going to talk about before I say goodbye, bye, bye. However, I'm going to cheat a little bit, and there is a little bit extra to this, isn't there, Monokami? Yeah, yeah. But we're going to talk about the wonderful second season that they did of the animation. Not only because the second season actually set up a lot of prequel stuff, but also had a second half of that season, which sort of showed off what they did after Danganronpa 2. And it really brings a whole entire Hope Speak Academy arc to a close, really. Um, because as far as I'm aware, there wasn't really anything they could push after that. Sure, they had Ultra Despair Girls, which is the in-between, like, linking between 1 and 2. But I'm going to talk about the first half of the season. Solely because that's where I kind of got to before I said, I'm done. Um, and really... I was surprised how much I liked this. Okay, so just to quickly touch upon this because I've only watched the first half. Danganronpa 3 End of Hope's Peak Academy is technically the successor after Danganronpa 2. Due to the fact V3 Harmony wasn't exactly thought about and it's split into two. It's split into the prequel and the sequel. First half takes place with Hajime Hinata, the second one takes place as Makoto. So it's split into pretty much three arcs. The Despair arc, the Future arc, and the Hope arc. I'm only going to cover the Despair arc because it really ties into Danganronpa 2 more than it does anything else. So the Despair arc takes prior to the events of Danganronpa 1, opens up with the homeroom teacher Chisa Yakazome, who begins her job of teaching at Hope Speak Academy, 77th class of super high school level students who stand out as talented in different ways. She's also helping her childhood friends Kayosuke and Jusko improve the establishment. Meanwhile, Hajime Hanata, a student in the school's reserve course, those without talents really, preps to undergo an experiment to make him the ultimate hope. He's developed an inferiority complex and lacks talents despite bonding with one of the talented students, Chikai. After spending half a year teaching the reserve course, Chisai asked Juzo for his trustee's ID in order to investigate the Ka Kamakura project. Now the amnesia riddle Hinata is referred to as Izuru Kamakura, meets a terrorist named Junko Inoshima and her sister Mukuro Ikusaba, who grow attached to him. Junko blackmails Juzo, threatening to reveal his crush on Kazoe. Juzo and the brainwashed Chisai tell Kazoe tell that Junko is innocent, allowing Junko's plan to continue unhindered. Using Izuru as bait, Junko tells Chikai while brainwashing Chisai's students of the 77th graduates, the brainwashing is done by seeing Chikai's death in a film, which contains a subliminal message created by an editor, Rezoya. Hajime decides to have his memories of the 77th class erased, as he's interested to see if hope can be more unpredictable than despair. To protect the remaining students, the 78th class helps convert the school's old building into a shelter, unaware of the two despairs lurk among them. As Junko moves on to the next phase of her plan, becoming curious about wildly unpredictable luck exhibited by the young student, Makoto Nayagi, Chisai rejoins Kayosuke, who's unaware of Chisa being brainwashed. Sometime later, in the virtual world, Izuru finds himself in his Hajime persona interacting with Chikai, thereby starting Danganronpa 2. So Monokuma, this is it. Saranara, goodbye. Avita saying, I will not miss you for a while until I go play you on my mobile again. Yes, I paid full price for both <laughs> the entries, what of it? And, well, that is it, people. He's gonna say goodbye. And I'm gonna say thank you very much for watching. This has been very much anticipated. I've really looked forward to doing this. Um, it's goofy, it's funny, it's awesome. Take it with a pinch of salt. Don't go on serious trying to look for meaning behind it. It's it's a visual novel to make you think between how they did it, etc, blah, blah, blah. I would recommend this series to any of my friends who are able to deal with it. Like, if you can get it through Doki Doki without getting mentally traumatized by some of this killings and that, you can get through Danganronpa. 
Um, plus, you'll get really attached to certain characters. I really love a lot of the uh, cast from Dangan 1 and Dangan 2. And yeah, if they ever do revisit Dangan Ramba in some form of Hope's Peak future or that, I'd be very open to see where it went. I know it's kind of come to a close because the series does lock off any potential future for it. But V3 makes me wonder, hmm, what is in the future for Danganronpa? If it's not going to follow Hope's Peak, where did it take me next? So there you have it, people. Thank you very much for watching. And next month we have Final Fantasy VII Saga. What is that? Oh, Final Fantasy VII is getting reviewed. So yeah, please watch out for that because I will be summoning the ludicrous amounts of behemoths. Or behemoths? Or benhots? Or benhots? There's many, many of them. I think it goes in the behillions. God, I should be a dad with all those, those jokes. Thank you very much for watching, people. And honestly, wow, I have enjoyed doing this. Um, because, like I do say, I love the Ramba series so much so that, like, the Despair Challenge was because of it. But a um, little bit of a tidbits whilst you're on the, you know, what to watch next, anything from Season 1 or Season 2, like, there's quite a few things coming up for Season 2, like, I've got Final Fantasy next month, the whole of the 7, like, all of 7, which is, like, 7, uh, Avon Children, Crisis Core, just, not Dissidia, um, like, but all of that, just, I've reviewed all of it for one review, that's my longest review I'll be doing, it's also the most exhausting one, that's taken me quite a while to do. Um, and then December is Delta Rune Chapter 2. I really want to just work that one in my leisure and do it for Christmas because, well, the first ever review I did was at Christmas. Or was it the 31st of December? I can't remember. It was Delta Rune Chapter 1, so I really want to do Chapter 2 near enough at the same time. Um, what else have we got? We've got Project Black and White, which, hey, hey um, that's starting next year, which is coming out. Um, if you want to go watch stuff, like, go watch Timelines. I really am looking forward to doing a second episode, but I'm still deciding what I'm going to do it on, so that's going to be fun for me to figure out. Uh, what else have we got in the lines of... Yeah, we did Sonic Adventure here. Now, that was an interesting choice. Um, I just spun the wheel and went... Yeah, Sonic Adventure. Um, as far as things go, I think um, the Despair Challenge, that's it. That, that This is kind of the conclusion to it, if you really want to look at it this way. Um, the Despair Challenge was, I was going to go through all of the Danganranga media and review it as I went. Um, however, because of health reasons, of, uh, mental health reasons more, not my physical health, my mental health had to make that stop because it was, even though I love the series, it was negatively impacting my emotions and how I felt, so that's why it stopped. Um, and this is kind of like the capping of it because I swung around after playing on the whole ball and we went, I really want to review this, I really want to get it out, I really want to finish it. Um, because, like I said, 2 felt like the conclusion, it doesn't feel like it goes anywhere after that. Um, there's nothing further to explore because they've just finished it. The evil that was Junko, who made Monokuma, who made the hope and despair and all the tragedies that followed, it came to conclusion there, so that's why. This is a very long ending screen, so please go check out my Twitter, uh, so I should have a link up here and a link in the description. Uh, check out my Facebook, because I'm starting to use that often, not as much. Uh, I do have Instagram, and I'm going to try and use that as much more. Um, also, a big thanks to all my friends on my Twitter who talked to me. A uh, huge shout out to Liam, one of my friends, Ryan, another one of my friends, uh, Cal, uh, Quacky, which, once again, I... I absolutely love his support when I do something funny or I'm just needing an honest opinion. Thank you to him. Uh, I do have a huge thank you to my best half, uh, Christine. She's amazing. And uh, just off the top of my head, like, um, yeah, just anyone who on my Twitter follows me and talks to me and, like, who I talk to in return, like, uh, oh God, I've got to remember how to pronounce your stuff, Jason. Uh, Shesium TV or Shianism TV? I can't remember how you pronounce it, but uh, him, uh, Kyle, etc. But all that. Big thank you to all of you, and thanks for listening and watching this. And, yeah, um, I am setting up a different camera angle. I keep setting up different new angles, but I'm looking for a proper one where you're not looking at the wall of pop. So, thank you very much for watching, people. Click anything here, click any of the series there, check out the update video, check out my um, quick review of Resident Evil movie trailer, um, that's a thing. And yeah, thank you very much for watching people, and hopefully you enjoyed.
So, until next time, nya nya nya, poo poo poo, see you later.